Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Drexel Seymour, who's a certified public accountant and author of the book, Rise Up and Take Your Position. Drexel, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mr. Saunders. It's a pleasure to, to be on this program. Yeah, I'm excited to talk with you because I always love talking with authors because somewhere down the line in your personal or professional experience, the uh, the drive within you comes up to go, I've done enough researching, studying, helping, serving, giving that I need to put all this into a book. And, and so the title sounds really great, you know, rise up and, and that's an action word, take, take your position. So give us a little bit of your background and then um, what caused you to think, you know, it's time to write that book. Sure. Well, th well, thanks. Thanks again for the opportunity. So I am a, a certified um, public accountant. I've been practicing accounting now since 1991. But um, I'm also um, a writer. I've been writing now for the past um, four years. I write articles on a weekly basis. I have a YouTube channel. And then, of course, I, I wrote this book. And, and the reason I wrote this book was because... Um, I suffered uh, from so many issues and, and didn't realize, you know, what my purpose in life was. And then I realized that there are many other people who are going through the same thing I'm going through and, and probably don't know how to get out of it. And so the main purpose of this book was to to help others to, you know, to rise up from where they are based on my experience. And, and you know, one thing that makes me, when you think about um, rise up, you have to have something to rise up to. So it's like the old uh, um, saying, you know, you you have to begin with the end in mind and you have to start with the why. So does that factor into your your premise of the book, which is, you know, first you need to know what you're rising up to so that you then have a direction to go. Absolutely. That 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 is in the book. Um, I, and, and, and basically what, what the book is saying to, to everybody that, Everybody has uh, a purpose. I know some people don't know what their purpose is, but the book will show them um, how to identify their purpose um, and so they could rise up to fulfill um, the gifts that's within them because I believe that, er that everybody has something within them. Um, it's just waiting for them to cultivate and invest in them so they can rise up to, to, to fulfilling that purpose. You know, I I think when it, it, what you're touching on here is finding your purpose or what is your purpose. That's probably one of the biggest, you know, black holes that people would say, I have no clue. I know that I've, I've been told I need to find my purpose and have a purpose in life. So I'm not, you know, like that, you know, a paper boat on the waves of the ocean and thrown and tossed around. Um, where, where do you recommend starting if someone says, you know, I need to actually find my purpose so I can begin to rise up to it? Well, the first thing I would recommend to anyone is to do a self-evaluation um, because their, their purpose is right within them and they didn't realize it. Um, some of the things, I mean, one of the first clues is that there, there are a lot of things that people are passionate about that they probably go to sleep thinking about it. Um, they wake up thinking about it, and more than likely, um, that is that is what you're supposed to be doing. And I would I would also tell individuals not to rule out the things you don't like, um, because sometimes we rule out things we don't like because we don't have any confidence. For example, for myself, I, I hated writing. I avoided writing classes in college, university, because I did I felt I had no confidence in myself. And now that I discover that this you know, writing now is one of the best things I do. So you also not not just don't just focus on the things you also enjoy. Focus also on the things you don't like because maybe there's a reason why you don't like it. That's because you have no confidence. And once you realize that you can do it, then all of that will spur into your in, into finding your 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 purpose. You know, you talk about confidence, and I think that's such an important topic because people have, you know, kind of like that imposter syndrome, 
you know, and that's actually a thing yeah. is, is they feel like I, if I do that thing that I feel like my purpose is, people aren't going to respect it. They're not going to accept it, embrace it. And I just feel like I'm an imposter. So does that factor into some of your teachings? It is, it is um, in, included into that. But um, one of the drawbacks, I think, to, to, the, to the confidence element is that um, a lot of us sometimes we compare ourselves to other people and we feel we're not good enough. We feel that other people are better than us, and so we, we don't have any confidence. Some people didn't even go to college. They feel they have no confidence. So all that is in the book. You don't even have to go to college to, to, to build confidence. You just need to be confident in what you do, even if you don't have a college degree, uh, but you know for sure this is what you want to do. And so all of that is in, in the book to, to build up your confidence level. And once you build up your confidence level, you can achieve anything you want to achieve. And do you think that that's one of the biggest obstacles people have in, you know, kind of living out their fullest life or, or, you know, finding their purpose is that confidence level? It is the confidence level, but, but, but what is driving it, in my opinion, is, 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 is fear. I think the greatest obstacle uh, people are afraid. People are afraid of everything. They're afraid of failure. They're afraid of people are going to think about them and all that it links back to, to their confidence level because they have all this, this level of fear inside of them. They don't have any confidence. So the main obstacle to me is that people are afraid. They're afraid of themselves as well. They're just afraid. Um, they're, they're afraid of failing. In, in the book I mentioned, even if you fail, it doesn't matter. It, it, failure is, is an opportunity. And if you look around the world, uh, the greatest successful people in the world experience failure. And so everybody wants to be wants to have this perfect, thing or this perfect person, but you'll never find a perfect thing, a perfect person. You just have to take the risk and launch out. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And yeah. I think, you know, there's a song that I was actually listening to on a flight last night coming back from a conference. Um, fear is a liar, you know, and, and fear is a real thing, but the, all of those things, um, you know, F E A R is known to stand for false expectations appearing real. That's and it right. really is a lie m- most of the time. That is true. That, that fear is a lie. Yes, that, that is true. It's called the opposite of fear. It's, it's faith, eh? You know, when, if you have yeah. the faith, you know, you, you could believe you could do anything, you know? So what do you, what do you then say to someone that goes, okay, my purpose is starting to clarify and I'm starting to take those steps of faith and then something happens to derail them and they give up. Okay. So I would tell individuals, I mean, first of all, they will experience obstacles. Um, that's unfortunately, that's part of life. You will experience obstacles. Life is like a season. You're going to have all these different seasons in your life. But, and you mentioned in, in the question about giving up, that's the key. We just can't, we can't give up. I'm quite sure if they reflect on themselves, they could reflect on moments where, where they had um, failures or, or they had given up, but things came to pass. And so they need to reflect on things in the past, how they was able to get out of it, and they suddenly get out of it, out of this situation now. But they, they, they just cannot um, give up. They always have to think positive. They have to... They have to to believe, and they have to remember that life is a season. Yeah. And what they're going through right now is just temporary. That's a really good... The, the song uh, by Torin Wells comes to mind, Hills and Valleys. You know, there's always going to be those valleys and that season. You know, you're in the season in between those two. And when you get to that hill, just know, good, relish it, uh, you know, uh, um, appreciate it. But you're going to look down and see, here comes a valley. And don't worry, though, that's a season. And look up, here comes the hill, and that's going to be a good thing. Now, the climb up to the top of the peak and the summit takes work. But, you know, when you get there, that's going to be a good thing. So seasons is normal. That's a, that's a good point to bring up. Thank you. Thank you. So what else? What what would you work with the client to say once you have that confidence, you take some steps forward and you bolster that faith, don't give up. Um what's what's the next step? Well they they first of all they, they, they need to they need to stay focused. They they need to stay focused and 
they, they, the thing is they cannot be distracted. But sometimes they may have some ideas that appear to be um, non-traditional. If they know for sure this is what they were supposed to do, then they need to do it. Even if they don't have any um, lots of money, uh, but they can start with something. Even just you know, even they start with just saving a dollar a day, it, it adds up. So anything that they have, I believe, is in, uh, uh, in is in their hands. And so the key thing is to to remain focused and 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 stop comparing themselves to other people. I, I think that's a big big thing we need to focus on is focus on you and stop focusing yeah. on other people. You know what your goals are, focus on reaching your destination. Well, I agree with that focus. Um, and and, and I, I, one of the things that pops in my mind when you're describing that is accountability for, oh, yeah. for keeping you focused and motivation. So no matter what that purpose is, whether it's to gain 20 pounds or lose 20 pounds or do better personally, professionally, many times your accountability partner, you know, maybe you need to ask someone, you know, can you be an accountability partner with me and for me? What is, what is the benefit of bringing that into the equation? I think that, I think that's an excellent um, point you raised. In fact, for me, um, as I mentioned in my book, I, I suffer from inferiority complex for probably almost 40 years. And, and honestly, the, one of the most important uh, points that I was able to overcome was, was through my wife. She, she was there um, encouraging me, holding me accountable, supporting me, and letting me know, Jack, so you are somebody, nobody's better than you. And so having somebody um, to hold you accountable, I think, is, is a recipe for success. I, I think that's one of the key, key means of, of, of overcoming and, and reaching your, your, your potential is through having somebody to, to guide you. Or not and, necessarily and, guide you or just hold you accountable. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and now the guide it then brings in, you know, maybe a mentor. You know, maybe you need to have two, a mentor that is willing to guide you, and maybe that's someone that has gone through the, the alleys that you have, are, are, are going through. So that's wonderful. But they're not yeah. really going to be the accountability partner because this mentor <clears throat> may be someone that is, you know, very busy and very influential. So maybe that mentor is someone that, that is willing to meet with you periodically. But that accountability partner is going to make sure that you're staying, you know, and, and doing the things to achieve those, those stages. And that's a really great correlation there as well. Yes. Yeah. Because when you're ready to go up or go down, that that accountability person will will be right there to to you know to encourage you to get up. Yes, yeah, for sure. Because it could be very lonely. It could be very lonely. You know, I mean, yeah. trying to do what you're supposed to be doing. Well, you know, you see the the you know video commercials about the Olympians, and it's like you know they're getting up at four in the morning to train and do the things that their competitors are not willing to do, or you know the the. So I think that that's. That's something that that accountability partner will help you stay on track and stay focused. But what do you think about when you have that goal, um, which is the purpose? I I have heard the push and the pull, you know, concept that relates to this, where it's like if if you just feel like you want to achieve that thing, whatever that thing is, you're going to feel pushed to do it because someone's you know saying you need to get up at four in the morning to do this thing. But you really want to find the why behind it so that it pulls you toward that so that you don't feel pushed. So what, what do you feel is the contract between being pushed and being pulled? Yeah, I mean, that's very good. I mean, I, absolutely. I think, so for example, for me, once I discovered um, my, my, my passion, my purpose, which, which I believe is to influence to encourage and to inspire. So because I, I realized this is what my purpose is, I automatically um, just get up in the mornings, get up at night, writing the articles, doing the YouTubes for inspirational, inspiring people. So I don't have to get pushed for it. I, I, I am doing it because I know I've discovered my purpose. And so like it comes natural for me. And, and, and when I realize that people are being inspired and encouraged by it, it just keeps pushing me more. 
So I think the key is finding it, finding what it is that you want to do. Yeah. Um, this is what you want, is not for your other people, or not to become famous or, 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 celeb- or get celebrity status, but to be, but to fulfill what you want to do. And I think once you find that, then automatically you have a drive to 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 get up in the mornings because it requires a lot of work, it requires consistency, and and all of that I think will fall into play once you realize what it is you want. Yeah, yeah, I think that is, that's. You know, it sounds so easy to talk about and to lay it out, but I think sometimes people need to hear it again and again and from different perspectives and hearing these things from your perspective and your, you know, experience um, may very well be the light that the light bulb that goes off in their mind. So I think that's, you know, very timely that you, you bring this book to to market. So I think that's wonderful. Well, what is some final Thank thoughts you. that you would recommend um, uh, about people will learn from the book and then what's the best way that someone can reach out and connect with you and, and read a copy of your book? Well, um, thank, first of all, thanks again. Um, my final comment was I, I would encourage people to, to believe, this is what I put in the book, to believe in your dreams. Okay, and I don't believe that dreams are a coincidence. I believe those dreams are there for a reason. Um, it's it's part of your life, and, and you should um, pursue it. And I also believe that um, you should do as much research as possible about your area, um, get as much knowledge as possible, and once you get that knowledge, you can equip yourself. And if you and if you get that knowledge, nobody can take it away from you. And 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 when you get that knowledge, it helps you with your confidence level. The reason some people are not confident as well, not just because they're afraid. Is because they don't have any knowledge, and so I, I would encourage we get as much knowledge as possible about that area that you want to 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 pursue, or you believe is your calling. Um, the book is available on Amazon. Uh, you could get it in um, a Kindle format, or you could get it in a printed format. Um, it's rise up and and take your position. Excellent. Well, I will make sure to have your website uh, hot linked in the show notes and people can reach Thank out you. and connect with you. And yeah, I love, love the subtitle, Don't Give Up, Find Your Gift and Cultivate It. Well, Drexwell, thank you so much for coming on uh, the program today. It was a real pleasure talking with you. Oh, the same is here. Thank you for the opportunity. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.